Deployment is one of the most critical steps in Kill Team, and I'm going to show you how to do it right. I'm Nick from Venture Minis, and let's get going. In short, deployment sets the whole rhythm of the game. If you're only doing normal moves for the whole game and you're deploying on the short edge, it'll take almost three turns of movement to get from the left side of the board to the right side. This means that where you deploy and how you deploy is going to craft your whole game plan. There's a few fundamental needs you must meet when deploying. You need to pursue primary and tack up objectives. You need to protect your own units from a turn one alpha strike. And you need to pose threats to your opponent. Usually folks understand the first one. You gotta get guys onto the objective to score, but this is often where I see things break down. In order to get objectives and take them, you must have the other two bits taken care of. So let's show you how to do these. How do you position your units in a way to protect them? I use this order of thinking to decide where to place my operatives. The best ways are at the top and the worst ways are at the bottom of this list. Remember, visibility is when you look from an operative's head to another part of your opponent's model, whereas line of sight is when you draw cover lines from one point on your base to every point on your opponent's. Line of sight is key. For those just listening, the ones that are here are visibility blocking terrain at the top, like Octarius walls, then heavy cover or obscuring, so being two inches away from the heavy terrain from the shooter's perspective, uh, light cover with no turn one vantage points able to fire on them, and then light cover that do have vantage point threats, and lastly, no cover, just out in the open. When consulting this list, we want to make sure that we're also prioritizing objectives. It's no good to have all you guys sitting at the back of your deployment zone in heavy cover if they can't go and contest an objective. So you need to weigh the risks of your team with your win condition. You can see my other video on that. So for Vent Guard, I know that I have to place maybe one or two guys that are fully out in the open to be able to try and score turn one objectives, since I have spare models and I can afford to do that. Whereas with Legionaries, I certainly wouldn't take such a risk if I know that I could get plasma in the first turning point. Let's talk about that last bit a little bit more. The risk of getting plasma in the first turning point. This is huge. As you deploy, you're learning about your opponent's threats. They're placing down models with their turn one orders, and so if everyone is placed on conceal, and they don't have any ways of switching out of that, like with the Wormblade special ability, that means they can't threaten you in the first turning point. This allows you to position in a way that's way more risky, so you could put all your intercessors out in the open on a turn one charge if they don't threaten you in the first turning point. This goes for you as well. You must pose threats to your opponent in the first turning point and not put everyone on conceal. However, by having your guys on engage, it makes them all able to be shot at, right? Well, not necessarily. If your operatives are not visible or obscured by being two inches away from a heavy piece of terrain in perspective of the enemy operative, then you're not a valid target in most circumstances. This allows you to place your big gunners in hiding on engage, ready to move out and take one-way shots at your opponent after they've activated. And even if you don't use those operatives in the first turning point, the mere threat of having those guys ready to do things is enough to keep your opponent from just deploying freely and having control of the board. So let's look at an example. This is a Kazakhin deployment that I made up on Secure. Obviously there's no opponents on the other side, so this is just a vague idea, but hopefully this is going to be helpful here. So let's look, how am I contesting objectives? Well, on the left side, we have a trooper who's ready to move onto the objective turn one with the sergeant with the plasma pistol, ready to position behind that piece of heavy cover on the left side, that circle-y thing, to shoot at opponents in the second turning point. The demo is ready to secure that center point and place the demo mine over there. Meanwhile, the right trooper is ready to secure the right side point. Because we're Kazakhin, we're all right with just taking three out of the six objectives in the first turning point. Everyone else is focused on the other two points I talked about earlier, with posing threats for your opponent or staying safe. I have everyone who's able to be obscured or not visible on engage, specifically my plasma and grenade launcher. This board is from the LGT, which is the London Grand Tournament I played at, and it is a bit more open than a lot of the boards that you see, so there's no Octarius walls that you can really hide behind here. You just have these sort of smaller pieces to heavy terrain, but we can still use that to position well. You can see the grenade launcher is on engage, but he is obscured from every point in the board. I measured it out. You can't get a shot on this operative unless you get past the center line. 
My plasma, meanwhile, is not visible to most of the board, and while the left side could see some action, my medic is available to ensure they don't get removed immediately. These two guys give me two shooters that can pose threats in the first turning point. Additionally, I have two silent threats. Firstly, the sharpshooter, which can do a free dash under the vantage point, and then we'll get to fortify it with a barricade using the free second scouting option for my recon trooper, and this gives me a huge silent threat range to protect against that left side weakness. Additionally, my demo trooper can plant a mine near the center too. This is not a perfect deployment by any means, but it's the kind of thing you should be looking for. Having threats available across the board with attention to where your opponent is deploying is key to making sure that your deployment is worthwhile. As a final example, let's look at deploying against Gellerpox. They are an asymmetrical team, so with alternating deployment, look out for where they're deploying. If you're on Into the Dark and your opponent is deploying all their hulks on the left side of the board, those hulks aren't going to be able to get to the right side of the board, so you're going to want to make sure that you can actually have AP2 weapons available to go respond to those hulks. Save deploying your AP2 weapons or your blast weapons for last so you can respond to aggressive one-side deployments, especially on Into the Dark. The same thing goes for these little horde models. Pay attention to where they are and position accordingly. If you can't, then spread your threats out evenly. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I got a Patreon. If you want to go support that, I just put it up. So would appreciate that. Keeps me doing this little hobby here outside of my day job. I got an Instagram too. And I love answering any questions you got in the comments. So let me know what you're thinking and I'll be happy to answer them. Until next time, it's Nick from Venture Minis. Have a good day.